So, tasks that we have. We've asked about Ruby in the village, so we can explore the coast for signs. We'll do that with Kim. Make the jam harder core, which needs interfacing but also takes some time. We can go back to the communist group for discussion. Now, does this mean that they only meet up at night? I'm not sure. Offering figurines to Dolores Day? I have no idea how we can do this. Getting the hangman's boots? I. The fact that this is still a task implies it can still be done, because it's not a task that's been forfeited, but the victim's body has been sent off. Uh, we need to locate a, f a working firearm that shoots 4.46 ammo, which again, probably will take some time. And then the number on the victim's armor, yeah. So, chances are, some of this stuff needs a new day to go to do anyway. So, we will do that. Um, we'll go ahead and make a save, because, you know, before we move on to the next day, that is a, a good thing to do. Uh, in fact, I've not been keeping track of which days all of my saves are on. So, we've got day three. Day two? Yeah, day two. Okay. But no more day one. Alright, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to do around here. I can't see anything else to interact with that we haven't already. So let's go to sleep. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. The place feels almost like home now, quiet and dignified around you. A new life by the seaside. You're incredibly tired. The darkness and warmth come fast. You're falling asleep. It's easier this time. Drifting off, your head has found a comfortable indent in the pillow. Your legs and your torso feel like lead weights sinking to the bottom of the sea until they're suddenly light. This respite, you've earned it, brother. Bask in the darkness. Let it swallow you up and swivel you around while you forget. Everything you've managed to remember. But I've been bad. I haven't earned this. Is this the last dream? Is it? No. This is the one before that. We'll just keep cycling it for you if you don't mind. As long as we can. Spin it like black yarn. Okay, because I was wondering whether that... Whether is this the last dream meant this is the last time I will go to sleep before the end of the game tomorrow. Well, yeah, that's just more of a meta concept. Enjoy it while it lasts. Thank you, Darkness. Thank you. You're welcome, Harry boy. You earned it. Fall into a deep, uninterrupted sleep. After centuries of darkness, the alarm rings. But what's this? You actually feel rested. There's no time to cuddle with your pillow, however, or as much as shiver from the cold. The world awaits. Open your eyes. Okay, we healed our health and we healed our morale. I find it a bit weird that he wakes up on the chair, not on the bed. All right. The new day. Day six. Good morning, Kim. Kim's with us now. All right, well, because we found out some more info, we need to go further up the coast to try and find Ruby, or the Belt Electric's mural, at least. So let's go this way. It does seem a bit weird that you don't have a catch up with Kim when you first meet up. Because he could, you know, he's got no idea whether you are you know, investigating stuff without him. 
For all you know, you could have found things like your gun entirely on your own without him. Alright, so is this the felt electric thing? An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. Interfacing 20, impossible, open. Okay, so yes, we do have a red check goal rather than the suggestion thing, which was kind of, um, you know, it was a flighting fancy, you know? Being able to go on a date with Lilian is, is just doing it just because it sounds like a nice idea, but yeah. Uh, red checks are probably the things we actually want to focus on. But I guess that's probably a bit more effort than the game really needs. The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. What's in there? Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. Okay, yeah, many a day what's down there? No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. Then we might find Ruby down there. We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol's sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. In conclusion, she could be under any building. But not in there. I hope not. Yell ho into the slit. There's no echo and no answer. Finished though. Alright, well it was worth a chat. Okay, okay, so... Felt electrics... Oh! Oh! Hello! Who are you? Kale noticed the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. A blonde man stands next to his son, pointing to the weather-worn ruins. He sees you approaching and smiles. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Han Hylostown. You must be Kim Kisuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. How does he know who Kim is? Nice to meet you. Lieutenant nods. Hold on. Hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. What was that about the windows before? Oh, yes. So, Mikhail. They had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. You and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before. But I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. He rests his hand on the boy's shoulder. The child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat, clutching to his verm-themed coloring book. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into verms lately. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor. Or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. He points to the building again. Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis. A cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. I'm looking for a suspect. Have you found? Have you seen anyone suspicious around? What's so fascinating about an empty old building? You like someone with money. Do you have any money? Great. Thank you for the interesting information. I'm looking for a suspect. No, I'm afraid I can't help you with this one, officer. It's just a regular day off for me and Mikhail here. He pats his son's head. So you haven't seen anyone around? No, I'm sorry. As I said, this is just a day off. We just arrived anyway. He's telling the truth. He hasn't seen anyone. What's so fascinating about this building? Aha! But it's not just any empty old building. He raises his hand to his eyes to shield himself from the freezing snow. All four of you turn to admire the mural before you. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Look at the building looming over you. It looks old and weathered. 
with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. I don't think I've ever heard of this felt electrical. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferro tape manufacturer remains. They're just a suit jacket. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, they were developing an ace up their sleeve. I'm mixing my metaphors here. What was that ace? It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. A tape computer? Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferro tape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer, which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Rehm, ICN, and Zam, haven't achieved yet. He grins, admiring the sentence he just produced. He assumes something like a combat stance, facing the wind. What happened? Indeed. What? The revolution! The boy wipes his nose on his sleeve. Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building, or one of the adjacent ruins. He pauses, pointing to the other building, then continues. All of this was built by Feld, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Feld built this side of town for R&D. You're saying that Felt Electrical built this boardwalk? What happened to the engineers, the company people? What did the revolutionaries do with this advanced tape computers? How did those tape computers work? Did they work like radio computers? That's something else. They built the boardwalk? Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? The lieutenant looks wistfully at the horizon as if, as if picturing gondolas rising to the sky. Yeah, it's on the map. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before it felt arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. What happened to the engineers? Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... He means that. The boys got shot by the communists. The boys were bourgeois. Turn to Mikhail. He means they all got shot on the head because they were bourgeois. Now, do you know what the bourgeoisie is? Tape computers, right, right. Yeah, the kid doesn't need to know it. Tape computers. He nods when tuzzling his suit jacket. What did they do with the advanced tape computers? They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What was that? What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. A short-lived legislative foundation for a short-lived utopia. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to Revachol on her political concept album From Bessier, Lin. You should read it. Every local library in Revachol stocks a copy of the decree. I don't know where the library is. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. He looks to his son Mikhail, who starts giggling, his face hidden behind the book. The kid takes a peek at the green and silver worm on the cover of the book, already forgetting about this part of the discussion. How do those tape computers work? Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien-looking, turn-of-the-century hardware. He raises his finger, remembering something. Buckle up. Ten years ago, I did a little... freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womty Domty Dom Center in Vredeport, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... 
Vumpty Dumpty Dom Center. Oh, hang on. A special consultant in Aranye. Is he related to Classier? Wait, did he just say Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center? Yeah. He did it. He said Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center like it's the most natural thing in the world. Hmm? What the hell is a Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Juiced? Okay, the Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center, Paul Ockerman, Keith and Guy Juiced? What are you talking about? The Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center for Contemporary Art. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ockerman, chose to... You're making this up. Kim, is he making this up? <laughs> in fact, I'm not. The Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredeport and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <clears throat> but perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Made of black film and folding tape structures. Nod. Ooh. I've seen cooler things than that. The RCM should get some of those. Uh, let's just say cool. Very, very cool. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to this precious device. But so they did. The felt playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Wait, the felt playback experiment? Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources report it as the felt playback experience, but those are incorrect. Why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. He takes a step back, the boardwalk creaks mournfully in the wind. I wanted to ask something else. But of course, <laughs> what else? <laughs> I want to hear about the Feld building again. You look like someone that's got money. Have any money? I do have some money, yes, but that's not what's really important here. He brushes it off like it's not a thing at all. No, I mean, come on, you need the money. If it's not a thing, he can give you some. Could I have some of that unimportant money then? I don't want your money, I just want to see whether my profiling skills were working. Yeah, but what does profiling mean to him, right? Could I have some money? Oh no, I don't have it on me, officer. I was talking in more general terms. He looks uncomfortable, his left hand squeezing his son's shoulder. I'm just spending time with my kid here, showing him around the lesser known parts of our hometown. It wouldn't be wise to carry huge amounts of cash on such expeditions. Why? Not that he would have to worry about being robbed. He looks surprisingly buff. Does he work out? By the way, do you work out? I do some Lomantang stick fighting now and then. Lomantang stick fighting is a form of martial arts originating from the island of Lomantang. It uses slender wooden sticks for confronting the opponent. A form of martial arts from the Isle of Lomantang, right? I'm not really interested in the practice, I just want to know how often you work out, now and then. That's what, like once a week? It's from the Isle of M Lo Mantang. Actually, a great many cultures have their own version of stick fighting, such as the sacred Mabolo tradition of the Hali people, a name deriving from the butter fruit tree traditionally used for crafting the long, slender sticks, whereas the sticks used in other cultures... He does off as he paints you a comprehensive picture of the history of stick fighting among mankind, seasoning it with unexpected pop culture references. Yes, Tramp seems like he is a talker, and someone who is very at ease at talking for long periods of time. Man, he's good at speaking. People must love him. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm boring you with details again. You were saying? He has a charming apologetic smile. I don't really remember what I was saying. I'm not really interested in the practice, I just want to know how often you do it. And I don't really remember what I was saying. Then I guess everything got said, right? He squints his eye in the snow. 
Great, thanks for all the interesting info. No, thanks to you for having me and Lisa Mikael here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Pick your brain? If anything, this was rather one-sided. He did the talking. Whatever. Okay, well, yeah, it's just a, a new character. So I suppose we should actually investigate the mural itself. You see, a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. So step closer must be a new prompt. Above the mural, a collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall. And the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Feld Electrical. How ironic. All these dark rooms. Feld Electrical. You only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. Why do I feel like I know this place? Indeed. Somehow you knew it was here. An urban ruin gutted by looters that once used to consume money and dispense warmth and light. Could Ruby be in there? In there? She could. Or she could be in the identical room over there. Or in that boat shack. In that church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? Ooh, shivers, impossible check of 20, listen to the wind. But, although our shivers is three, we have plus three, found the empty trap. Plus three, heard Lena's true story. Plus one, reconstructed the execution. Plus one, confronted the pigs. Plus two, established the nightclub. Plus two, discovered the anomaly, two millimeter hole in the world. Plus three, death notification. And plus one, found the jacket. So, yeah, very high. Even though you're sure you succeeded, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead. No rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. What was I even attempting to do here? Trying to talk to the wind. The city. Whatever you thought would happen did not. And now you're just standing there in the pale of the morning with your hands fallen to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Is it in your secret repertoire? A trick for when you're out of ideas? Technically speaking, it's the city has been talking to me. I don't talk to the city. Turn to the lieutenant. She could be anywhere. How do we find her? How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We already scanned most of the outdoor areas on our wild cryptid hunt, so we have an understanding of the geography, at least. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula, ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. Okay. Sector by sector. If that fails, if we don't find her? Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bankers, tomb drainage, this place. I'm sure it won't come to that. He looks behind him at the dark red box crumbling across the chasm. New task, look for Ruby on the coast. Well, I'm thinking it's behind the door that has the red check on it. Walk the coast. The old boardwalk. The reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. An adventure awaits. An adventure on the windswept urban coast. Buckle up and raise your collar. This search is going to be wet and cold. Okay. Uh, listen to the wind again. And we've got the same amount of the same chance of passing it. So sure, why not? A breeze, like a cool sigh, moves over you. The cool air breaks across your body. It brings the salt of the sea into your lungs. Go to the children of the big sea. That failed that time on a 97% chance. The big sea. The big sea. 
That can only mean one thing. Communism. Yes, Comrade Zephyr, I shall find them. Girl Child Revolution and Girl Child Communism. What the hell was that? Yes, I understand. What the hell was that? The wind rushes away, leaving you where you were. On the rotting boards of the felled building. New task, work with the children of the big sea. Officer, are you okay? It looked like we lost you for a second. Did I have a seizure, Kim? I think I need to talk to some kids in the village. The wind told me to talk to children. Let's roll. I think I need to talk to some kids in the village. When you're ready. Okay, put points into shivers to open this white check. Now, I did get a skill point, but I was kind of hoping to use it on interfacing. I wasn't expecting this to fail. Not the direction you want to be impressive in on the whole, but still impressive. Yeah. Like, 97% chance. I would not have thought, well... I'm trying to think if I have actually passed a check at 3%, and I don't think I have. So that's, that's unusual to fail that check. Got the thoughts, so date of birth generator. Date of birth generator. Oh, the, the game's not speaking. You were born in the year 07, in the last year of the commune of Revachor, right before it fell. In the old military hospital on the ground floor where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. The revolution had about one year left to go and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years year ago. 07. In the last year of the commune of Revachon, right before it fell in the old military hospital on the ground floor, where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. The revolution had about one year left to go, and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years ago. You are 44 years old. The bloating might never leave your face, but beneath it, you still have some years. You still have some hope. Thanks, game, for triggering after 20 seconds rather than straight away. And yeah, so that means that when I guessed I was 45, I was right-ish. And Kim is absolutely not a good judge of judging uh, people's ages. Learning cap for logic raised to four, minus one difficulty to all physique passives. Does that mean... Physique passives are easier? Or does it mean I have less chance of passing them now? Minus one difficulty to all physique passives. I assume that's minus one difficulty because it's found out that I'm actually 44 and not, you know, 50s. Yeah, it means they're easier, you know you're a young man. Okay. All right, well, physique is one of my weaker areas, so having minus one to those is good. Um, shivers would have been nice, but yeah, oh well. Uh, and it says I've got shivers being taken away by one. Oh, it's this one. Regular lore official. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. 